Welcome back! Well, in the last video, we have finally defeated the remaining duelists in the terrorist dueling circuit. And in doing so, we have caught the attention of Bendak Starkiller, who has finally agreed to face us in the dueling ring, which will allow us to get his bounty. Uh, this is an exclusively uh, dark side uh, quest, in that there's no way you can gain light side points for it. You will always gain dark side points for it. Uh, but I do want to do it anyway, because I do believe this bounty is... Uh, uh, justifiable. It is one of the government contracts, so it would fit into character in terms of a light side character, but unfortunately the only way we can do it is by setting up a death match, which does involve doing some pretty shady things, as Azure told us. Uh, before we actually go into the doing ring, I want to make sure that Kane is properly equipped and uh, buffed up, because we will need it, because this is going to be one of the toughest fights we've faced, if not the toughest. Um, as Bendak alluded to in our conversation with him, he's got a blaster that he likes to use, and that blaster is very powerful. I'm going to use Brejik's gloves. Brejik's gloves are designed to enhance the hand-eye coordination of the wearer, and they give you one uh, dexterity. And I will use the belt that was mentioned. Um, Brejik's belt, when used in conjunction with his armband, produces an effective barrier against melee attacks. Uh, and that gives you... Uh, Resistance against bludgeoning, uh, five. I think the swords we've got are good. As far as I know, let me just look at these. None of these really appeal to me very much, so... And this one's pretty, uh... Our prototype Viber Blade's pretty nice, as is. I do want to use the better energy shield here. Uh, Bredrick's armband. Uh, this one isn't exactly one that will help us out very much here, but it is good uh, against uh, uh, melee attacks, uh, and it gives you the same message that the belts uh, gave. Resistance of minus five against slashing. And I want to use a Sith energy shield which deflects energy, sonic, and electrical 30 points total, and that will definitely come in handy against the blaster. The Sith have made many improvements to personal, personal forearm shielding, much to the dismay of the Jedi. Though efficient, the unit must be replaced often, as it burns out when repeatedly activated. Well, we won't be activating it too much. Let's go ahead and talk to Azure. I'm going to go ahead and take care of this, and I'm going to go ahead and activate all of our stuff. First the energy shield, and all of our stimulants. Unfortunately, some of the time that the stimulants will be uh, working will be spent with the announcer announcing everything. I'm not going to spend much time on this. Let's get on with it. I'm ready. Yes, if we're still alive, that is a big if. Ladies and gentlemen, come with me now on a journey to the savage days of years gone by, to a time when two combatants entered the arena and only one came out alive. They're illegal. They're bad. They've been outlawed for nearly ten years, but we've got one for you tonight. A good old-fashioned death match in this corner. A living legend. A man whose very name would make his opponent shake in their boots. If any of them were still alive. <laughs> Out of retirement for one last battle. Bandic Starkiller. And who would be crazy enough to step into the ring with such a lethal legend? Who would be mad enough to face almost certain death merely for your enjoyment? Ladies and gentlemen, feast your wondering eyes on the mysterious stranger. And now, the moment we've all been waiting for. Let the death match begin! And we get dark side points. Now, there we go. I'm pausing here because I want to plan this out carefully. I'm going to be using grenades on him for most of this. He's also going to throw grenades at us too. 
So I'm going to run away <laughs> as far as I can. Run! Okay. I think I will use a poison grenade on him now. There we go. That will soften him up a bit more. Let's try... He's not going to move around too much if we're moving here, because he's going to mainly use grenades or his blaster on us. Uh, not Ion Grenade. Frag Grenade, I don't know if that will do a whole lot for him. Okay, that will... That gives, uh, that lowers him up, uh, down a little bit more, but only by a little. But every bit counts, believe me, with this guy. Oh, and now here he goes with the blaster. And yes, that blaster is pretty lethal. Let me give him another poison grenade. And let's see, how about a concussion grenade? I don't know if that will be too much. Okay, that didn't work. Oh, wait. He's stunned. We can use this to our advantage. Come on, don't miss. There we go. Bendak is down. It's over. It's over. The fight is over. Woo! Bendak's star killer is down. Bendak's star killer is dead. Yay! Yay! Let's collect our money and get out of here. Does anybody else have anything to say about it? We'll, we'll check on them in, in here in a bit. And we get his blaster pistol. That is awesome. I'm definitely going to give that to Karth, probably. Seven hundred credits. That's nice. Let me go ahead and give Karth the blaster before I forget about it. Uh, let's see, Karth's blaster. Let me give him Bendax blaster. We'll be sure to upgrade this because it is an upgradable weapon. This blaster belonged to Bendax Starkiller, a duelist legendary on Terrace. It is a highly adaptable weapon and is in definitely of better quality than any standard issue pistol. Alright, let me give him an adrenaline amplifier as well. Oh, and I'll give him the RO amplifier. Alright. Yes? We are good to go. Let's talk to these other folks. This is great. You'll be bending. You're a legend. Whenever anyone asks, I can say I was the first duelist the mysterious stranger ever beat in the ring. I'm gonna be famous. Well, at least we've boosted his self-esteem a bit. That's good. Hopefully that will actually be the case. I don't think you had a chance against Bendik, but you sure showed me. You showed us all. Too bad your career as a duelist is over now. I mean, nobody's gonna be stupid enough to go up against you anymore. Not even Twitch. Kind of funny, isn't it? You win the big match, and you kill your career. Yeah, well, we never really intended to do this for the long term anyway. Congratulations, stranger. I never thought anyone would beat Starkiller. Did you know it was because of him that I became a duelist in the first place? Really? As a little girl, I used to dream of meeting him one day. When I finally did, the guy was a complete slime ball. It made me realize I had to be cold and ruthless to survive. Like him. And now, he's dead. There's probably a lesson in there somewhere. Yeah. Something need to think about at least. Congratulations again, stranger. And goodbye. Don't be cold, Ice. It's not worth it in the end. What about you, Twitch? Do you have anything to say? Okay, nothing new. What about to my fans over here? Twitch is my favorite. He's wild. Hey, I just beat Bendak. Come on. Hey, it's the mysterious stranger. Great match against Bendak Starkiller. Truly one for the ages. Thanks, man. Well, we've beaten Vendak, and now we can finally leave the doing ring behind. Nothing more to do here in the cantina as far as I know. Let's just look at our journal to see what we've got left. Uh, we just need to go over to um, 
um, Zax to collect the bounty in order to finish this uh, side quest, as well as Selvin's bounty. And before we do anything else uh, regarding the Sith base, we need to first purchase the droid um, to break into the Sith base. Uh, before, but before we do that, I'm actually going to stop by the clinic because I want to give Zelka the Rat Ghoul serum we found. So let's do that first. I believe that Terrace Planetary Information's uh, quest will be gone once we get off Terrace. So we won't have to worry about that being there. I'm glad we were able to beat Bendak without having to worry about leveling up anymore. Because I definitely want to save my levels for later. Before we move on, let's heal up a bit. There we go. Actually, while we're doing this, let me demonstrate something to you. I want to show you how force speed is used. And, uh... As this says right here, this um, uh, area here of the action menu is where the friendly force powers are, as uh, I mentioned earlier when we were doing the tutorial on the Endar Spire. Left-click the mouse to activate a friendly force power selected in the fifth icon of the action menu. Some force powers affect only the Jedi using them, others affect the, whole par the entire party. I don't really know why it says the fifth icon of the action menu, since it's the, the very first one. And when we do this, we can run faster, and as a result, somehow everybody else runs Vassal, faster. I was How did those Vulcans manage to capture a famous Jedi like you? Or were you knocked out when your escape pod crashed? N no, I was conscious. But my Force powers were exhausted from using my battle meditation in the battle for the End of Spire. Without my help, you might have never gotten off the ship alive. Fair enough, but I've seen you Jedi in action. There's there's no way those thugs could have stood a chance against your lightsaber. Yeah. My lightsaber was misplaced. I couldn't find it after the crash. I looked everywhere in that pod. The Vulcas came and overwhelmed me even as I was searching for my weapon. Wait a minute. Let me get this straight. You lost your lightsaber? <laughs> I mean, isn't that a violation of some kind of Jedi code or something? Well, Obi-Wan would be very grumpy about that if he were here. <laughs> I'm actually going to say this. This is no laughing matter. During the crash, my lightsaber must have... It must have fallen from my belt and rolled under my seat. The Vulcans probably found it there when they searched the wreckage. Hey, 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 don't get mad. I'm sorry. It's just funny to think of a legendary Jedi losing her life. <laughs> this is one detail. hardly consider myself a legend, Karth. Though I will consider your advice when I relate these events to the Jedi Council. There is no need for them to know every detail of what transpired. Indeed. <laughs> I like that conversation. I have to pick at Bastila sometimes. I can't say that she doesn't deserve it. Let's go and give this uh, serum to Zelka here. Welcome back. Are you in need of healing or medical supplies? I can treat you right here at the center for almost any condition, except the Rakul disease, of course. Well, we can alleviate that, because we've got the serum. You have the serum? Impossible. How did you get this? No, wait, I don't really want to know. <laughs> can, can I see it? The serum, I mean? I need to see if there is enough for me to analyze it so I can start producing it in mass quantities. Here we go. Hmm, let me see. Yes, this is it. A cure for the Rakul disease. With this sample, I can make enough serum for everyone. The people of Terrace owe you a debt they can never repay. Please, take this small reward. It isn't much, but it's all I can afford. A few credits and two spare med packs. Thanks, Elka. I appreciate it. I appreciate everything you've done. There are many who would have sold the serum to the crime lord Davik for a much higher sum. Now, is there anything else I can do for you? Let's go ahead and leave. Goodbye, and good health to you. If you ever need any medical aid or treatment, you know where to find me. We got only 50 credits from that, uh, and if we gave it to uh, uh, Zax and Davik, we would have gotten a thousand credits. 
But I didn't really want to do that, because I figured Zaxa, uh, or uh, Zelka would uh, be able to make better use of it. You blew it! If you'd brought that Rakul serum to Zax, you would have made it worth your while. But no, you had to go and do the honorable thing. Indeed we did. Some people just aren't so concerned with money. Well, there's nothing left for us to do here in this part of the upper city. Let's go ahead and move on to this side. We've got to go to the droid shop to purchase uh, the Last special thing, droid. Think about joining all the Jedi who were running off to follow Revan and Malak when they went to fight the Mandalorians? That was nearly five years ago. I was still an apprentice. My battle meditation hadn't even manifested itself. Yet even then, I had the wisdom to obey the will of the Council. Unlike Revan. I guess. Still, do you ever wonder if things could have been different? Or would Revan and Malak still have been corrupted if the Council had supported them instead of dragging its feet? That's a good do point. Don't blame Revan's corruption on the Council. Your Republic saw only the threat of the Mandalorians, but the wisdom of the Masters saw beyond the immediate threat. Hmm. Not sure exactly what to think of this. There was something lurking out there. Something that devoured Revan and Malak, and many other Jedi. Had the Council sent us all into the unknown, how many more would have fallen? So you're saying we should have done nothing? Just let the Mandalorians conquer us unopposed? I mean, the Republic was under attack, and the Order abandoned us. We did not abandon you. But the Council were not about to throw lives away foolishly. In time, we would have aided you against the Mandalorians. But you couldn't wait. Revan and Malak offered a quicker answer, and the Republic chose to walk the easy path rather than the path of wisdom. Now we see the results all around us. You asked me if I think things could have been different. I know they could have. If Revan had only listened to the Council, millions of innocent people would still be alive. Yeah, right. And every single one of them would have been speaking that alone. I, I think we're done here. Let's just get back to the task at hand. Interesting to see the uh, various perspectives on what has happened during the war. That's one of the nice things about taking uh, various combinations of squad... or uh, of... Uh, party members with you is that you can often get these conversations. And now we've got some new uh, uh, opportunity to talk to Karth, so let's see what uh, we can uh, find out about him. Maybe he'll tell us a bit more. <laughs> Pastel is all of a sudden in our face. Yes, what's on your mind? I do. Fair enough. What do you want to discuss? Yeah, he seems to have some problems with us, and I want to get those issues out of the way. skills of an elite commando and you saved my butt more than once. Between that and your facility with languages, I'm lucky you're here. But that doesn't mean that I'm gonna stop watching you being wary. I'm just not built that way. Period. Yeah, why exactly is he, uh, is he being so hostile toward us? I mean, if we failed him in some way, then I'd like to know. If we can do better, I'd, I'd like to know what we can do. You, uh, you haven't done anything yet. But there's no guarantee that you won't. I've been betrayed before by people, and I'm not. It won't happen again. Hmm. Yeah, so you want some guarantee that I won't betray you? I don't know that you'll betray me, but there are no guarantees. Not for you, not for me. You don't have to take it personally. But this issue is with me. Even if it is with everybody else, it is being directed at me, so I do take it personally. Well, that's too bad then, because I'm not going to change. Well, let's see if, if we can get him to talk about it. Because if, if there is an issue that needs to come out in the open, I'd like to I'd like to bring it out in the open. No, I don't want to talk about it. But I want us to save the galaxy, if that's even possible. Why is whether or not I trust you or anyone so damned important to you? Why, why do you even care? We don't have time for this, so can we please just drop it for now? Can we pick it up later if you really must? I, mean, I want to get underway. I care because we're going to be together, and I want to make sure we work well together. But it looks like we're going to have to wait until a later time to finish that. Let's go to the droid shop and purchase the droid. There he is. Hey, little guy. He sounds a lot healthier than the other one. Hachu Apanki. 
Jishawa Anibun Kasha Chonasi Ichua Byongbo Joni Minamambato Mutanga Boksha Um Nagnong Kin Kun Shin Shin Kin Nikin Kun Nambule Mule Raji Kun Mokao Danya Foki Chachiska to Punta Kakaspaka Bano Oto Two thousand credits. That is really diff That is really high. I mean, we've got that, but let's see if we can persuade her to lower it. Aww. Now we can uh, threaten her, but I really don't want to do that. I'll just go ahead and give her the money. And now T3M4 has joined our party. Let's go ahead and add him to the list. I'm going to remove Karth for now. I am just going to use him um, to uh, unlock the Sith base for us. I'm not really going to keep him in the party. T3M4 is probably um, one of the uh, least useful party members, except if you're doing some sort of security uh, hacking or cracking or computer hacking. And we can uh, level him up. He's always going to be neutral, by the way, no matter what happens. That is one thing that I haven't mentioned. I, if I'm not mistaken, I believe that it, no, ma uh, no matter who you have with you, except if it's uh, T3, the decisions that you make will uh, not only give you light side or dark side points, but it will also affect the light side or dark side meter of the people with you. Uh, let's see here. Let's give him... I am going to give him more dexterity. Just in case we ever do find some occasion to take him into combat. As far as skills go, definitely computer use. Definitely repair and definitely security. And I'll just save. Level him up again. We're going to have to do this several times. Uh, repair and security, and... Oh, awareness, why not? We can't use stealth, because there are no stealth field generators for uh, for these droids. Uh, and, of course, we can't use persuade, because only the main player character can do that. So, nor treat injury, because repair covers that for droids. Feats, let's see what we can do as far as feats are concerned. There are less feats available for droids. So that kind of narrows down our options for us. I think I will give him... Hmm. Oh, what should I give him? Hmm. I think I'll give him improved caution. Stealth won't really matter, but... We didn't really put anything to demolitions, so I think I'll do that here. I kind of want him to be our all-around skill uh, character. More computer use, and more of these. We'll save that extra point for later. You have been granted the following feats this level. Tactician Logic Upgrade. Let's see what that's about. Having witnessed the effects and actions of combat firsthand, the droid is able to self-upgrade their defensive algorithms. This feat grants plus four to defense and is always active. This feat replaces the combat logic upgrade, which only gave you plus two to defense. And this one gives you plus two skill points uh, extra to demolitions and stealth, of course. Oh, and we got one more feat that we can uh, add. Uh, let's see, let's give him... Hmm... Improved gearhead would, would probably be best. This is probably why I should have given him all along first. This feat gives a plus two skill point bonus to repair, security, and computer use. This pl replaces the one plus bonus, uh, the plus one bonus given by gearhead. Good deal. And uh, that is all we can do for now. So now we've got T3 in our party. Let's go ahead and try riding him around here. It's really fun to have him rolling around, and uh, 
in case you're wondering, you can take him Listen anywhere. Me, oh, be quiet. Um, you can take him anywhere, even in, in environments that may not even seem suitable for droids. It's not really going to matter. Uh, he's always going to remain healthy no matter what. And just to be a uh, completionist, let's equip him here. I don't, I don't think he has two weapon fighting. Let me check. And he's just got the bas blaster pistol. Yeah, okay. No two weapon fighting, so I'm just going to keep uh, him with one blaster pistol. And since I'm not going to use him much in combat, I'll just keep him with a generic one. He comes with a stun ray. Um, I'm not really going to read these right now because we're going to get better ones that we're going to put on him later on. And I'm, I'm not going to make any use of these for the time being. For now, I'm just going to use him to open this door. And he does it automatically, which is awesome. Good job there, little buddy. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring uh, somebody else back into our party. I think I'm going to bring Karth back in here because I uh, keep forgetting this is on this screen. <laughs> That's another thing that I didn't know about this game when I first played it was that there was actually a party selection screen that you could use while in the game. I thought you had to go back to your hideout to select a new party, so that ended up eating up a lot of my time. So yeah, I will use Karth. I, I'm tempted to use Dalbar, but I think in the end, Karth will be more worth it, because we do need another ranged... We do need a ranged character, because Bastil is another melee character. So let's go with that selection for now. And we will break into the Sith base and head inside in the next video.